So this is just going to be a start of, or a part of a full modeling series that I plan on doing, which is this Porsche GT2 RS. Uh, this is just some footage that I've recorded already, uh, which I'll try and get up soon, but uh, I posted a picture on Reddit and people were pretty interested in the headlights, so I thought I would just make a quick tutorial on that. Eventually there will be a more in-depth version as a tutorial goes on. And I'm sorry for the mic quality in some of the sections, it's just the uh, Windows doesn't like my microphone, but the voiceover sounds better than the live recording. So I'll try and fix that in the future, but I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm going to get into paint and we're going to break it down. So what I do in paint is I break down the big surfaces that I need, which is I think just the most important part. Personally, it's just breaking it down to understand what simple parts you have to actually model. First of all, we have this like outer rim here that extends all the way around. Uh, we'll make that its own part. Uh, at first, and then we have this inner rim that has this rim that follows up to this point, but it also has like that bit that comes out along the back that starts coming out from there that we need to model. Um, and then it uh, it just goes in like that until we hit this like these lights right here. So we have looking at the surfaces, we have one surface here, we have the yellow small surface there, a red surface, and then a green surface. So generally that's all pretty easy to model because we have the out we should have the outline from the uh, headlight and then we just have to extrude inwards and then we have that. And then in here we have um, just this shape that just goes all the way back um, and then creates like a little housing for these sections. And these sections, what we'll do is, uh, which we'll just simplify them. Uh, we don't have to be too accurate. Uh, we can model this section as one with these details in the mesh. Um, and then we'll do these blue parts by themselves uh, up and down. And then this part will be its own thing afterwards. Um, but yeah, uh, one more thing that we're going to be doing is uh these parts this one and that one they look separated but what we're going to do is we're going to join them and then we're going to make a little bit of a uh, like casing so we can put the bulbs in but yeah um now that we understand the parts just do this with your own headlight um uh, example break it down understand what major parts you need to make so one two um and three with this bulb and then this is kind of four, but it joins that. But we'll model it separate first. And then these more detailed sections. But yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Now we're going to move back to Blender. I want to show you another breakdown uh, for another headlight I did just to show you how you can do it for different cars. So this is uh, the reference image, and this is the render. Uh, as you can see, like <laughs> we're side by side, I think it looks great uh i forgot to put the casing in but yeah there's the casing so you can see the reflections it's kind of hard to see what's inside of the casing but um yeah so this is separate from the body except for a few parts where i had to follow the body lines uh which i just achieved by um just like extruding that down and then creating it uh, as you can see this area down here you have this like like padding with those indents which I made. And then we have this like translucent part, a uh, chrome part, and then we have these little crystal bulbs here. Uh, I didn't make it like super accurate, but for like what I needed it for, it looked nice. Uh, and then we have this with the little hexagon panel and everything. Yeah, so like hiding everything else you'll see how um like simple the model really is for the headlights like it's nothing too complicated once you actually break it down so there's this back plate uh which just has those uh, and i actually just extruded this down to match that curve there 
um, and then this is by itself with bulbs underneath it. So once you take that away, uh, it's really just this big shape, the chrome bit, and then some small crystals, and then the actual bulb right there, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, so I think the most important thing to take away from this is to break down what you have, uh, and then you'll have a better idea of, uh, you know, how to approach it. So I decided to speed up the modeling process because at the beginning most of it is just like picking lines from like, body panels and then scaling and extruding and it actually turned out to be like 50 minutes but if anybody wants that just let me know I can like I commentated and everything but yeah so we just took the body panels and we cleaned it up so it's more circular and then we extruded the first rim just using E to extrude and S to scale. Uh, and then when we move on to the next part, we once again take the uh, innermost edge loop and then make it a separate object. And then just keep adding rims to keep like what you need to be tight. So just keep referring to your reference. Uh, right there, I scaled to the active element where my active element was the top. Uh, so we can bring it back just smoother. And this right here is the uh, like light panel where I just added a solidify modifier to that one specifically. And then between that, I'm making the uh, like casing and then I connected the casing with the outer bit. So just extruding it back like using control I to hide everything but it. So then we can just face that up without like having too much geometry in the way. And now we finished the casing, we move on to the like bulb area. Uh, this is pretty easy, I guess. I made a circle with 10 vertices and I rotated it by 18 degrees so that we could have a flat line on top. And then I made a little cutout where the ridges go. And then I just extruded everything back. Uh, I'm like, I messed up a few times making the ridges um, because I wanted to extrude as I move everything up but I eventually settled on just like filling it with edge loops beveling them to have three points so I could select the middle and just move it up but I moved up way too much here so like I went back and forth but I eventually put two edge loops in the middle so I could select only the middle and then bring it up which yeah you can see right here it looked a lot nicer and it like looked a lot closer to the actual one and I realized they were too spread apart so I just brought it in and I flipped it around because nobody will see the back anyways and I joined them together so I could save a bit of time and then the bottom one is just the same just bring it out uh, make it longer and put it put it in its place yeah and here I'm making the like bulb housing I actually I set it to flat shading and low subdivision because it'll give us a like crystal-like look without having to add extra geometry. And now for the rest of the housing, I just did it by hand by drawing out the vertices, uh, the vertices, sorry, and then extruding everything back. I used a um, mirror modifier by setting the origin at the middle of the its respective bulb. Uh, so that it would mirror around the bulb and I would only have to model half of it and then later you uh, Apply the scale and the modifier so the origin goes back to the world and then you can mirror it to the other side of the car So yeah, I just finished that up I had lots of holding loops and I filled in the back of that casing Just to make sure no light comes through and then for that little grill looking part I just drew it out by hand and faced it up with quads and then just extruded it back and put edge loops where I needed to. Uh, eventually I actually fixed this by making the gaps between them smaller and I also moved it out further than I initially put them. And then the last thing that we do is we make the casing. So I just like, grabbed it and extruded it in making like making sure that nowhere overlaps and I just faced it up 
uh, because it's glass and shading issues won't be too much of a problem. I also added a rim at the bottom because I thought that would look nicer. So the next part is the materials, which I think make the biggest difference in uh, making the render look realistic. So to start off with the casing, I used a iridescent glass shader that I found from uh, Damien Matthews on YouTube. So I'll link his video in the description uh, for a more in-depth look at the node tree. Um, so it gives this like rainbow effect uh, when you look at it from the top, which I really like. Uh, and just gives it that extra realism, and when it reflects the HDRI, it just looks crispy. Um, but it, it'll look kind of bad in the viewport, maybe, or it's just my settings. Uh, but the final output definitely looks a lot clearer. Uh, and then we move on to this material, which is not a rubber material. I just repurposed it. It has a slight metallic, and then... Uh, about 0.3 roughness, but uh, you just tweak this to what your reference image looks like. So my reference image looks like that on the right, so I try to find something that looks similar. And then I have a really simple chrome, which is just high metallic and low roughness. And just tweak it until it looks like something that you're happy with. I also reuse the iridescent glass on the bulb area. And this is a ridged glass that uh, is based on the... Uh, just a normal glass with uh, principal transmission high, low roughness, mixed with a transparent shader. Uh, and then it uses a bump map with a wave texture, and the wave texture is controlled by the object's UV. That means that you have to unwrap it. Uh, and I, I did a stupid thing here where I clicked unwrap after I fixed the UVs. So. Uh, yeah, just make your own UV, uh, it, like the part shouldn't be too difficult, the parts that you have to um, work with. Yeah, so just ignore what I'm doing here. I was angry that I accidentally uh, erased the UV map that I had before. And then behind that, I have a just a mission texture that's just a ring uh, to give it like a little bit of light. And then with everything stacked on top of each other. I think it turns out really nicely. So the last thing I want to touch on is the importance of an HDRI to just make it look even more realistic because you get those reflections in the glass that are so nice. So the way I set it up is you control T with Node Wrangler enabled to add on uh, in your world nodes so that you can rotate your HDRI. So I rotated it so that I could have the windows reflecting in the headlights, which just looks <laughs> it looks really nice and a lot more realistic. And I also had to add a uh, spot lamp in just so that uh, I could brighten up the light a bit because without that, it was just looking a bit dark. You can also do the same by cranking up the brightness of your HDR. So I hope I covered everything that most people wanted to know. If there's anything else, just ask me in the comments. It's my first try the tutorial and it turns out that it's actually a lot harder than I thought so um, yeah I'm still learning so if you have any questions just ask me down below I hope you did learn something though and yeah if you have any like results from this I'd love to see them so you can send them to me like in the comments or something you know yeah bye bye